guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing the end of the year book tag. From what I understand, it's meant to be done around September, but I'm doing it now. <laughs> Question number one is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? Yes, <laughs> a bunch. Um, so I've started in uh, the vlog where I read books recommended by Jim Gestalt. I started reading Daughter of the Forest. I'm halfway done and I've yet to pick it up again because I had um, I had a buddy read. I'm in the middle of another buddy read, but after this week, I'm going to go back and try to finish this before the end of the year. Uh, in that vlog, though you probably didn't see it, I don't remember when I stopped filming, I did start Terry Pratchett's going postal, but I didn't get very far in. This is where I stopped because, um, again, I wanted to come back to it at a time where I could fully focus on this book. Uh, currently, I am reading Every Word is a Bird. We teach to sing by Daniel, Ta Daniel Tammet. This is a reread for me and I'm reading it for a buddy read with Rosie. This is part of like nonfiction November <laughs> thing and uh, I'm loving it. Second time around, it's even better, probably because I'm paying even more attention now since I know I will be discussing this book. What else am I reading? I'm also in the middle of I Will Judge You by a Bookshelf, but it's like a collection of tiny comics, so I don't really see it as like a book that I'm in the middle of that I need to finish, um, so that doesn't really count. Um, I'm finishing Sugared Game. I actually have like 20 pages left. I'm loving this book so much. I'm reading it on ebook and it's so so good. I don't know the first one I enjoyed the first one but I gave it four stars and it, it wasn't the kind of book that like really thrilled me but this one the second uh the sequel to Slippery Creatures it's like it's so much better and I don't even know why. I think I have a suspicion that it has to do with the fact that I listened to the first one on audiobook and it took me like two days. I always listen on double speed, it's like a very fast paced um, situation and I've been reading uh, the second book on ebook for <laughs> several weeks now. I've really been taking my time. It was the kind of book that I would read like a chapter or two before bed. Um, so. I've been with these characters in this book for so much longer and I feel like I'm much more invested in everything that's happening and in their relationship because kind of like if, you, if I think of TV shows, uh, there are TV shows that I binged that I watched like several seasons in a very short time and I really enjoyed them. That's why I was, you know, I kept watching but after that, I don't really remember anything and I'm not really that invested. Um, but when I think of shows that I watched little by little, like one, the old fashioned way, you know, one episode a week or something, those have really stayed with me. And I feel like um, I'm so more, much more involved in the story and the characters, I care more. And after that, they have a much more lasting Effect? Memory? What am I saying? <laughs> so I don't know if I'm preferring the second book simply just because I read it with my eyes and it took me longer and more invested or is it actually better and, and I actually prefer this story to the, the one in the first book. I don't know. You know, will this stop me reading audiobooks on double speed? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm also, oh my God, I have to finish The Artist's Way. <laughs> the Artist's Way is a very special kind of book. It's nonfiction and it's, um, the purpose of it is to unblock your creativity. So it's, uh, it's mostly for artists, but you don't have to be an artist. Everyone is an artist. We're all, you know, creators of some kind and it's, uh, it's absolutely magical. It's so, so, so good. It has 12 chapters and each chapter represents a week. So um, ideally you would read this book in 12 weeks. So in the beginning of a week you would read the chapter and then for that whole week you do the activities that you were supposed to do for that week, then move on to the next one and so on and so on. I finished 11 weeks. I have one chapter left, one week of activities left. and. 
I think, uh, and I've I've started I've started reading this book along with like a group of people. We all connected over this book. We all wanted to do it, and um, this was in um, May. We all started together, though each one of us had like a different timeline of you know what week we were doing in the book. But every Sunday we would have a Zoom call and talk about that week, uh, what we um, discovered, what we tried, what kind of revelation we might have had, and it was so lovely. But then it kind of stopped, we stopped the, um, the meetings in the beginning of June, I want to say, and after that I just had more and more breaks between the chapters, and I think I read week 11 like two months ago or something. So, and I really don't want to start all over again. <laughs> I just want to finish the last week. Oh, there's been so much time between the chapters that I might have to go back and maybe do chapter 11 again along with the activities. I don't know, but I do want to finish my artist's way journey this year. <laughs> That's it for the first question. The second, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? This question makes sense if you're doing this tag in September. To me, I am a mood reader, so I'm not really a seasonal reader, but um, while everyone else who is a se seasonal reader or um, someone who likes to plan their TBRs, uh, during the sort of autumnal uh, September October time everyone is super excited about horror books and about creepy books uh, Stuff like that more like a Halloweeny vibe uh, or just books with like darker themes and even though I'm not picking up those books uh, Because you know, I wasn't in the mood for them. I was uh, reading other things at the time watching so many TBRs and seeing people uh, talk about these books have definitely um, inspired me to pick some of them myself and so I think for this <laughs> question I will just show you the books that I bought during the autumnal transition time that was inspired by other people and everyone uh, was talking about Frankenstein and uh, Picture of Dorian Gray which are two classics that are sort of darker and have a, a creepy vibe to them and I've wanted to read this for a long time and I've never considered reading Frankenstein before hearing so many people describing it as their favorite book ever so these are the two books that are my seasonal transition books <laughs> number three is there a new release you're still waiting for um, no I'm not currently keeping track of releases because I feel like I have enough books <laughs> to go through to worry about releases. Also, I'm trying to sort of change my uh, attitudes towards releases. Ever since joining Booktube and Bookstagram, I've felt this urge to pick up releases. You know, when when a new book is released and there's a lot of hype around it, everyone is talking about, you know, getting it as soon as possible and you sort of feel that way as well but I stopped and thought about it and it just didn't make sense to pick up a brand new book when I have so many others that I want to go through and I feel like by the time I am available to pick it up and I'm emotionally ready I mean the mood to pick it up by that time first of all that book might actually make it to Russia so it won't be an ebook the audiobook might be available in the library by that time, also just might be discounted by that point, you don't know. So I have no idea what else is supposed to be released this year, but the two releases that are sort of recent that I am I was just very excited to find out that they happened was uh, Anthony Horowitz's sequel to Magpie Murders. I don't remember the name of that book. It's something murders again. And uh, I didn't even know that there would be a sequel to that book. I read it this year, Magpie Murders. I read it in the beginning of the year and I absolutely adored it. I gave it five stars. It's sort of like a classic murder mystery, a book within a book, a murder within a murder uh, sort of story. And uh, I'm very excited to see what else he comes up with in this series. And I think in September, Ken Follet, my, 
my love, Ken Follet, came out with a prequel to the Pillars of the Earth series, which is one of my all-time favorite series, and uh, it's a, it's another brick of a book, <laughs> and uh, and like I'm so excited about these books, but I've no really any desire to go out of my way to find them to buy them because I have other things that I own that I'm excited about so <sighs> question number four what are the books you want to read before the end of the year well I do want to finish all the books that I've started that are already mentioned which are you know all of these are on that list I also would love to uh, to read Frankenstein because it's not long and I think it's doable for December. I really don't want to add anything else, but if I'm going to be really ambitious, I'm going to add these two. So first of all, I have Turgenev's Fathers and Sons, I think is what it's usually translated into, though Fathers and Children is a little more accurate translation. Uh, I realized that I've not read any Russian classic this year which is appalling um, and I read this in high school I think and I remember really liking it but I also distinctly remember realizing that I didn't get it all <laughs> like there's something that I missed and I want to reread it and maybe I will get something else out of it I don't know <laughs> I'm just very curious about this one and of course I have Sovereign, which is a historical fiction detective murder mystery story and I did mention it before this is the second or the third book in the series but since this is the only one that's available <laughs> in Russia I'm just going to start with this one and later if I find the other books I will restart the series from the beginning. I've had this since summer, so I, and I, you know, I love this book so much. I love that it's a hardcover. This was, by, by the way, a mistake. I was not supposed to get a hardcover book. I paid for a paperback, <laughs> but I got this one and I got so excited and it's so beautiful. It has maps and it's just, it's so lovely. It would be nice to read it before the end of the year. I also have this vague plan to read The Outlander this winter. Not necessarily in December, just this winter. And I wonder if I will be in the mood to actually get to it. <laughs> Next up, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Uh, pff, yes, <laughs> always. I don't really pick up books expecting not to like them. I always hope to enjoy everything that I read. Some of the books that I've mentioned that I want to get through before the end of the year are a lot of people's favorites. Hopefully, <laughs> they will be mine as well. I mean, everyone loves Terry Pratchett so much. I've never read him, I don't know. Daughter of the Forest is beloved by so many people. Uh, Frankenstein is a lot of a lot of people's favorites, so... I mean, there's so many ones that I honestly expect to love and to add them to my all-time favorites. Number six, have you already started making reading plans for 2021? I want to say no, but that wouldn't be true. <laughs> I already have a buddy read that Tara North and I, we are planning to do in January for the book, The Faithful Executioner. I mentioned that book in my random um, nonfiction TBR and I got a lot of comments. People got really excited about that book specifically and uh, Tara offered to do a body read. So that's what we're doing. I I don't know when in January uh, we might move it. I don't, I have no idea. But since for now the plan is to do it in January, that's already a 2021 plan. When I think about winter, I think about classics as like a good time to to get to some of the classics that I've been wanting to read or reread. But um, then again, when I think of winter, I think of seasonal depression. So <laughs> I might want some fun romances. I don't know. My bigger plan is to get through as many physical uh, books that I own that I've not read so I can feel more free to pick up other stuff. I have a lot of video ideas that I've, um, you know, been planning since uh, this summer 
and a lot of them are, you know, challenge vlogs that are themed. And the problem with those videos is that would mean that I would have to get like four to five books that are not even on my active TBR, but just inspired by that theme or that thing. I feel like I have enough books that I want to get through before, you know, making before making plans of adding five books that are not even on my active TBR to read for a video. So even if I just finish all of these ones, well, this is my notebook, wait. <laughs> So even if I just finish all of these that I've mentioned, uh, it already will feel like I have a little more freedom to go out and pick out something else just for fun, just for a video to read for a challenge. And uh, generally, I just hope for a better reading attitude in 2021. I feel like the transition into starting a booktube and openly talking about books and trying to create content that um, is inspired by other people's content, which means that it mirrors uh, other people's reading behaviors and attitudes. And also just being more aware of how other people read and what they read and what are the new releases and how many how many books each person reads a month. It, I feel like it <laughs> wrecked havoc on my reading life just because I suddenly became very aware of a lot of things that I didn't pay attention to before. Like how many books do I read? Uh, how much nonfiction? How much fiction? How do I, do I read it all in audiobook? Do I read it on this? It's just like there are all of these things. I used to just read and not tell anyone about it or explain how I read and why I read and all of those things and suddenly it's all I don't know, I feel like these past months that I've been on here, I've been sort of getting used to a different way of looking at things and trying out different attitudes towards reading. And uh, hopefully in the new year, I will finally settle on something that works for me. So yeah, I'm just excited to find my new normal when it comes to reading because I do want to continue doing this but I do have to find a healthier way of reading and not connecting it so much with creating content, if that makes sense. Anyway, so this is it for the end of the year book tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know uh, what are your end of the year plans. Do you have a list of books that you want to read before the end of the year? Uh, are you still trying to catch up to your reading goal? I've surpassed my reading goal for this year in like spring. <laughs> I think so far this year I've read over 150 books and that is absolutely not normal. That is absolutely not something I planned and it's absolutely not something I want to continue doing. I read to escape, I read to comfort myself and a big part of why I read is to distract myself. Hopefully next year I will be in a better place. I will be happier. I will be busier with fun, interesting things in my life and I won't feel like I need to constantly escape and not face my life. So my plan for 2021 is actually read less. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.